Yeah. That one was rough. How do you think the internet's gonna feel about not doing that? This I was squinting. It's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do have my eyeglasses on. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, it's all good. As long as you're squinting, it's okay. That's right, we are back for episode two of my Coachella video series where I'm uh, showing you a little bit of behind the scenes of the programming, design, and the execution of our Coachella show for Lewis the Child. In episode one, I talked a lot about the design and the idea of what we're going to do for this show. And in this episode, we are going to take you through rehearsals and through our load in and first show on the first weekend of Coachella. And of course, what better way to start off a super busy week than by sitting at the kids table of the Holiday Inn Jeez. Express. We got, we got everybody. We got them. Is there any without no rear seat or without rear seat? No. There is none. Okay. They all go and sit. So you probably put Pelly's in the front. Cool. Although our gear is from LMG on this particular show, our rehearsal space is actually right up the road at AG Staging. They have an epic warehouse with tons of space and this nice little fenced in or draped in, however you want to call it, area for rehearsals. And the big selling point, they've got an LED wall that's already up, so don't need to bring your own. These guys are actually so chill that they let me store my 1999 Forerunner. Uh, at their facility for like three months while we were on tour. Now that is customer service. And one thing I always make sure to do when we have two consoles and we're building a rig for the first time, I always just send one of those consoles over to Dimmer Beach. It's just so much easier to troubleshoot stuff when there's an additional console right there. is vastly superior though. Not Naru PB and all of her glory. All right, guys, I want to show you something kind of kind of crazy I figured out. I don't work with P3 a lot or Septrons, but I was running into this issue where I've been outputting, I've been outputting ArtNet correctly, but for some reason, I'm just fading up this test pattern. And you can see when I get to like 50%, after I go like past past it, it starts like flipping out. So I didn't know what was going on. So I'll show you what I figured out in the P3 to make this work. And I just so happened to like figure it out by pressing a random button in the patch. So that Septron I fixed, but the rest of these are in a different mode called P3 hybrid mode. All right, so here we got our P3. This is our patch, all of our fixtures. All I had to do was switch this P3 mode from hybrid to pixel map. So switch it here to pixel map, hit OK. And now we've got another one that has uh, sprung to life how it's supposed to. So if I go back over here, yes, now that one's fixed. So yeah. Pretty stoked that uh, random experimentation <laughs> just so happened to uh, to fix this one issue. 
So now I wonder if I can, can I highlight all of these at once? Maybe. Come on, baby. Oh my gosh, I don't think I can do it. That's okay. We'll do it one by one, I guess. From the beginning, I knew that these Septrons were gonna be a huge pain in my rear, but I knew that coming into this and I knew that once we got everything set up for the first time, it was going to be hours of test patterns and moving things around in advanced output. Uh, I really wish there was some sort of like camera based system where I could aim a camera at this array of elements and feed that camera as an input into uh, some software that automatically can flash like certain lights to white and then notice where it is in the input of the camera and then align that with the advanced output. So yeah, again, since I've already programmed all of these songs, uh, I don't really need to be touching the regular lights like a whole lot. Uh, in fact, I'm just kind of running the time code as everybody else is working on their edits and their changes. And I am just buckled in scrolling my test pattern across these Septrons for hours and hours. Okay. I think it was, it was maybe like two hours, which technically is hours and hours, right? The thing about being the person who, who drew the design and who knows how it's supposed to look. Um, I, I don't really bother a whole lot during the build process with being super OCD with the stage hands or the techs or whomever is helping to build the rig, especially when I know that it, it's going to take me way less time if I can wait until everybody leaves and I can then just get on a 12 or 14 foot ladder and get it all organized in the way that it makes the most sense to me. Cause in my mind, I wanted this to be not a random, but a pseudo random, um, some sort of, you know, elegant random, uh, to the way the Septrons were organized. And it's, it's something that just is not communicated well, you know, when everybody's just trying to build the rig together. And, uh, again, I knew this was going to be just a time investment of mine and I'm okay with it. Plus I think in the end, this look is totally worth it. At the end of rehearsals day one, we have a fully built, teched, and fine-tuned rig. And before we leave for the day, I have to always build this like reveal cue so that when the artist walks in, they can see like all of the elements kind of interplaying and working at the same time. So we've got our VL6000s with the Lixel laser bars on the upstage riser. The curved hex lines are all evenly spaced and looking gorgeous. The crown is showing off all of its pixels. The mega pointy prisms are prisming. It's times like this when there's no one around. It's just you and the lights and you get to enjoy all these fancy toys and revel in the beauty and the elegance that is stage lighting. It's so calming. Noise. I don't think this is accurate. What's up, LMG? It says eight foot. Oh, yeah, LMG. What? On, this thing's great, dude. I'm getting this one. Is... I know. I want one. I don't know too. what I'm going to use it for. I'll hold your pipe any day of the week. Dude, thanks, bro. <laughs> Here, was I go to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> wait, I was just waiting. How do you think the internet's gonna feel about not doing that with sound? I was squinting, it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do have my eyeglasses on. Yeah, yeah you're good, yeah. It's all good. As long as you're squinting, it's okay. You did too. What? You did too. No. Let's see what's going on here. This mega pointy had a, kind of a strange issue, and I think it ended up being because uh, she was a little too close to the hazer that I'm we had sure, on this riser. Day two of rehearsals, uh, we got all of our updated audio for all of the new versions of the tracks that uh, the boys were playing for this set. I think in the end it was maybe three or four new tracks, and then I want to say uh, another four or five tracks that were mostly the same from the tour set that we were used to playing but with either extended sections or modified intros, things cut out, things added in, uh, vocals chopped out so that the 
live vocalists won't be performing over their own voice. This is where it's important for me to make sure that I have all of my data labeled appropriately for which version of the song we're running. Because of course, after we're done with this show, uh, we're not always gonna have guest performers. So uh, just making sure that all of the pool hierarchy and where I have all my items organized makes sense for reintegrating back into the show later. A few more long nights and plenty of Uber Eats orders later. Crazy amount of sauce. It's time to load up our truck and say goodbye to the AG staging warehouse. And if you're ever at AG, make sure to check out their, uh, well, they've got a little museum of sorts of all sorts of interesting lights and consoles. They got something for everybody. We're back on the road again out of Las Vegas. And this time I felt so lucky. I got to see one of my favorite pieces of infrastructure that I've only ever seen from the air flying into Vegas before. And that is the Ivanpah Molten Salt Power Station. This type of stuff just blows my mind. Even though these towers appear white hot, they're actually pitch black in color. So the sun heats up these boilers, the boilers heat up salt so it's molten salt and then that is then transmitted to another section where it then boils water to spin turbines like that oh, that's so cool of course uh, the best part about being on the bus is getting off of the bus stretching your legs a little bit and uh getting some food Evergreen, that's the shit that got stuck. I've never met a celebrity before. <laughs> hey, there y'all are. Yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Your billboard. Your billboard. Yeah. Not, it was the Zook one. The Zook one. The Zook billboard. This first night of programming, we're fortunate enough to have about three hours of time on the rig. Anytime you are going from previs into your first opportunity to control the real lights, there are always certain attributes that just never visualize properly or in the way that you expect. Things like shutter, iris, gobo rotation speed, framing shutters, honestly, even just intensity is, is something that you really need to see in person. And one note about intensity, for all these tour shows where you have a different rig every time you go out and play the show, I always make sure to just have a bank full of group masters, negative group masters, for each type or each section of lights. And that's just to balance the overall intensity and make sure that even if we have some lights that aren't as bright on the stage, everything has its own moment to shine and is well balanced. A good way to check for this if your eye isn't quite uh, attuned to it naturally yet is to just use your phone or a camera or something to aim at the stage where you can see which sections are maybe overexposed. And we didn't have any on this particular show, but a really good example of a time when you really need to use a group master is when you have a fixture like a Protron Eclipse that is just like an order of magnitude or two brighter than a lot of other fixtures on your stage. Those Septrons are going to be fighting for their lives up there if you don't have a good handle on group mastering other fixture types and making sure your video doesn't blow you up. That and of course everybody knows the position presets are super important. I use Jason Giaffo's plugin for calculating offsets so that I don't have to be diving into the live edit patch every time I want to uh, change a light that's been hung 90 degrees off. But remember, whenever you go to an overnight programming session like this, you don't know how long these lights have been on. You don't know how many programmers have been using these lights and if they've gotten bumped in the process. So I always make sure whenever I pull up to a rig, if I have the time, of course, and in this case we do, to do a full reset on all the lights. 
and watch the rig. I mean, you can't really do anything else while they're resetting anyway. So just watch the rig and see if there's anything funky going on with the lights. If maybe one is getting stuck on its own tail whip or something is colliding with another you know, piece of the stage, it's a lot easier to see it then than when you have the lights on and doing things. Oh, well, we're back bright and early. We all got about three hours of sleep after our programming session last night. And uh, we're back here at 8 a.m. to do our actual sound check, full, full throttle, uh, everything running as if it were a real show situation. So we're gonna treat it like a real show situation and uh, get out front of the house right now, get set up and do it. Our video guy really likes us. Us, okay. Us. Well, that's good. It's good that a video person likes us every once in a while. We can't have all of them hate us. Next morning, bright and early. Uh, you might be wondering, what, why are they going back to the stage again? Well, uh, we also need to do sound check. So overnight is for when we do all of our visual checks. Uh, and then, of course, because I need to see the time code as well, I show up for the sound check so we can make sure show control is working, making sure all the cues are firing, uh, and that everybody's happy. All right, it's 9 a.m. We start sound checking at 10 for an hour. And I got my laptop to figure out an issue with the crown. So I'm underneath the crown here and I uh, believe I figured out what the issue was. I think it was with this connector um, because we were losing like half a universe of lighting uh, LEDs intermittently. So basically I decided to go direct into our control box that has the Octos the LED decoders in it. And I just went into the device, uh, or excuse me, the patch editor of Madrix, power cycle the crown, and uh, just kind of went universe by universe until we figured out where the problem was starting uh, what was good. So I was just in this patch editor window, highlighting entire universes. And checking and making sure that they're actually functional. And uh, found that one was intermittent. And then I remembered that we were having issues with this four. So I uh, power cycled, reconnected, and now it seems to work. Let's get it. And I gotta say, as someone who doesn't usually just attend or go see other shows, even if I'm at a festival working, I, I really, really enjoyed Coachella. The vibe, everything was really immaculate. Highly recommend checking it out if you get the opportunity. So Maddion just got done, BB Bridges is on now, and I am finishing cleaning up our Septron section of our ground package. Two rolls of E-tape deep, almost done. We're gonna head out to front of house soon. So basically what I did is I went through and I, I rerouted all the cabling so that it kind of takes the shortest path and back traces along all the Septrons so that there's no like dangling cables since the LED wall really kind of shows that. Making the long walk out to the front of house through the moat. We've actually got a moat at this festival, which is nice. So I can walk through the whole crowd. Unimpeded, unencumbered. Alright. Time to go into show mode. See you guys on the other side. And also, okay, don't be mad at me for this next part. Uh, usually I have a camera set up recording a bunch of cool looks for the show. Uh, I was super locked in. I was locked in on this show, okay? Big, cool show, really happy with how it was turning out. Um, and I did not have a bunch of clips. I do have photos though. So I do have some photos from some cool moments during the set, as well as some pirated material from our good friends, the punters on YouTube. 
But to sweeten the pot a little bit, there's also some overlays of um, the the time code for the songs in the visualizer, as well as the sequence sheet, so you can kind of see what's going on. And by the way, if you want, I'm going to be uploading um, basically all of the visualizer renderings for the songs during this set. So if you want to see how they look um, with the cue sheet right next to them and a layout view or something like that, make sure to uh, mosey on over to Patreon. I also have this show file up there, so check it out. No music, of course, but um, yeah. It's so funny looking back at how I programmed this song because I believe this is actually the uh, the the most tenured track in our timecode show um, for this whole time that I've been with uh, with LTC. Uh, I believe this was the only one that we've played in every single era of these shows. So this this one has been through a lot, and it's it's really funny seeing how I program things and how I labeled things and how I would change things, uh, especially now that I've switched over fully to mode three for the last like 18 months or so. I just remember having to go through and update a lot of these delays every time we would have a really large stage and partially switched over to bitmapping for a lot of that. But yeah, it, it's just funny seeing my, my old workflow since this is the oldest song I have in the library currently. And the visualizer I'm using here is Capture. Uh, it works really great for these sorts of things, previs and getting renderings out to clients. Uh, Capture is actually the first like design slash rendering previs software that I ever purchased. Um, and it's served me really, really well for, for the last couple of years. And with that, we're wrapping up Coachella weekend one. A big thank you to all of the, the team and the crew, local and touring who helped put on such an awesome show. It was a great time. I had a blast. Make sure to stick around uh, for part three of this little series that I'm doing where we'll be delving into weekend two and uh, fixing some issues that arise. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. On your shatter? Yeah.